all you are watching simulink tutorial and today we are going to see lookup table in detail so let's start so new simulink model blank model okay so we need inputs to test the functionality so repeating sequence tear block So I'll just give values for 2.5 and 6. Okay. So for lookup table, we need one dimensional lookup table. So the table connect the output of repeating sequence tear block to the input of lookup table. And we need a scope to observe input and output value. So, scope number of input ports 2, 1 for input, 1 for output. Okay. As we are using repeating sequence test block, which is a discrete block so go to configuration parameter and change the solver settings so fix type solver discrete then stop time as 3 as we are taking just 3 values and I'll just make the fix type size as 1 each one sample it will update the output okay now for lookup table we need x data so it goes to breakpoint of the table so this is the x data just 1 2 3 4 5 values so the x axis goes to breakpoint part and its respective y values which are just twice of x so 1 2 3 4 5 it's twice 2 4 6 8 and 10 okay apply and okay so we'll just simulate this model go to scope go to view layout and that's how we can observe input and output in two different graphs okay so for four we have value eight which is directly from the x and y data we had given okay now here it was 2.5 so for 2.5 we are getting output as five and for 6 we are getting the output as 12 okay so we are getting the required output but if you remember that i had given x data for the table as 1 to 5 values and its respective y values as table data but our input is 4 2.5 and 6 so for 4 we are getting the direct value 8 from the table data but for 2.5 and 6 which are intermediate and out of range values so how does the table calculate these values so if we go to algorithm of 1d lookup table you can see here that interpolation method and extrapolation method linear linear so if you remember the maths we used to calculate the y using interpolation and extrapolation method in school so for intermediate values it performs interpolation which is linear and for out of range values that is beyond 5 in this case it performs extrapolation so If you look at this graph, 
okay so which is the plot of x and y of same data so to calculate y value for x equal to 2.5 if i draw a line between this point and this point which is for 2 and 3 respectively so i'll get the intersection over here which is 5 so for 2.5 we get 5 as the output similarly for 6 it performs extrapolation and calculates its respective y value now if i change the algorithm i'll make it flat you can see the extrapolation method is clip. We'll observe the output and see what it exactly does. Simulate. So if we look at the output, so for 4 we have output as 8 which is direct from the table data. For 2.5 we have output as 4 and for 6 we have output as 10 so if we again look at this graph now the algorithm is not linear but flat so what it will do is it will just draw a flat line from one point to other so for 2 to 3 it will draw a flat line and at 3 it will transit to 6 so for 2.5 will still have value as 4 so that's why we are getting output as 4 for 2.5 and if we consider the case of 6 then if you remember for extrapolation it was by default clip in case the interpolation method is flat. So it clips the output that is for beyond range values it will give the corner output that is 10. So that's for algorithm. Now let's come back to the data in the lookup table. So what if I just swap x and y so this data goes here and control v okay so x is now y and y is x okay apply okay I'll just make this algorithm as linear. And simulate the model. Okay, so for 4 we have 2 directly from the table data. For 2.5 we have 1.25. And for 6 we have 3. Okay, so for x and y, if I swap it, it works. Okay, now let's skip the old x in the table data and the old y will just reverse it. Okay, So for 1 it is 10, for 2 it is 8, for 3 it is 6, for 4 it is 4 and for 5 the output is 2. Apply. Ok. Simulate. So for 4 I have output 4, for 2.5 I have output 7, for 6 I have output 0. Okay, so basically if I write the y in decreasing order, it works. Okay, now let's reverse the x data. 
so five four three two one okay apply okay so if you remember earlier whenever we changed the data it was giving some kind of graph on this block okay now it is a question mark let's simulate this one and we get error values for breakpoints for this lookup table must be monotonically increasing so next time you implement one dimensional lookup table keep in mind that whatever is your table data but the breakpoint that is the x data it should be monotonically increasing okay so next time you implement one day lookup table in your project keep all these things in mind that is algorithm and the x and y data increasing or decreasing order okay so that's all for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and keep watching and keep learning